Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The Treasury Department announced who was going to be eligible for the $7,500 EV tax credit today. And one shocker was that Rivian was not on the list. Now, this subsidy is something that has been in flux over the last few months. The rules have been changing, and the most recent rule change has to do with where batteries are sourced. And that's the reason that Rivian has been taken off of the list. Tesla has actually stayed on that list except for one vehicle, which is going to get partial credit for the tax credit. And General Motors says that it's, all of its vehicles are going to be eligible. So let's dig into exactly what happened here and what the impact could be on Rivian. My name is Travis William. Thank you for watching Rive Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content, including Rivian. And I want to go straight to the reports here. Start here with this piece from Reuters, which says that Volkswagen, Rivian, Nissan, and BMW all lost access to the U.S. tax credits. You can see here that the Model 3 standard range rear wheel drive is going to get a half credit of $3,750. So Tesla is going to be slightly impacted, but all of these other automakers are going to lose access to that $7,500. There's a number of reports out saying the same thing. And CNN actually put together a list of all of the vehicles that are going to be eligible for the tax credit. You can go through that here, but the big ones here, are the Chevrolet Blazer, Silverado, Chevy Equinox, Model Y, most of Tesla's vehicles are listed here. Really, the list itself is dominated by GM vehicles, despite the fact that they're not going to be most of the vehicles actually sold in the U.S. that are getting that $7,500 tax credit. I want to show exactly what is being ruled on here. So there are a couple pieces here related to the tax credit. So who qualifies? You can go to the amount of income that a family or person has. That is a limitation. There's qualified vehicles. The battery has to be a certain size, seven kilowatt hours, which is not very big at all. Gross weight of less than 14,000 pounds. So basically not a giant truck. Final assembly must take place in North America. So that's in there. And then there's these cost requirements, $80,000 for vans, SUVs, and pickup trucks, $55,000 for other vehicles. Those are things that have been in place for quite a while now. But here's the new piece. Were vehicles placed in service or delivered on or after April 18th, 2023, the credit amount will depend on the vehicle meeting a certain mineral sourcing and or battery component sourcing requirements. A vehicle meeting both sourcing requirements may be eligible for the full $7,500 and meeting one, only one of these requirements is $3,750. So what exactly happened with Rivian? I think that's really the big question. The company has not put out a statement, but I actually went through their 10K and tried to look at exactly where they're getting their batteries from, what the issue is, because they're obviously not getting them from U.S. suppliers based on this ruling. We know that they have a long relationship with Samsung SDI, but they don't actually call out that supplier specifically in their 10K. They do say that they could be impacted by suppliers not meeting requirements or not building new facilities, but no specific supplier, at least on the battery side, is called out. So I think that's really interesting for Rivian, because this is obviously a major risk factor that might not have been on their minds just a few months ago. The other thing worth noting here is that Rivian actually buys its batteries on the spot market or it sells on the spot market, meaning it doesn't have long-term supply agreements. That could give the company the ability to buy from suppliers that are creating batteries and cells in the US, just change where the supply comes from. And I think that's something we'll probably see in the future. But for now, this is going to be a big drag on the company's financial statements. And the reason is that $7,500 simply made their vehicles more attractive. We know that demand for these high-end, high-priced vehicles are being impacted far more than for low-priced vehicles. That might be because people don't have nearly as much money as they did during the pandemic when the government was sending out stimulus checks. It might be because interest rates are higher. It might be because there's a recession coming. For whatever reason, people simply are buying fewer eighty to $100,000 vehicles. Now, that obviously, that $80,000 vehicle isn't going to qualify for the EV tax credit, but the lower-end Rivian vehicles are going to qualify for that credit. So now those vehicles now got $7,500 more expensive, at least short-term. This comes at the same time that Rivian stopped reporting what their backlog is. So last quarter, that was a change that they made. We'll find out this coming quarter what, they, what management has to say about that and what traction looks like. But we're not probably going to get a lot of details about what this $7,500 tax credit loss means for demand for vehicles. Now, the good news for Rivian is that they do have a fairly sizable backlog and fairly low production. 
So short term, you're probably not going to lose a lot of sales because there will be an abundance of people who are willing to pay the price to get their Rivian right now, their R1T or their R1S. But eventually that price point will become a bigger and bigger challenge. So maybe later this year, maybe into 2024, the loss of this tax credit is going to be a really big deal for a lot of buyers. And remember that we already know that Tesla is reducing the prices of its vehicles. So that cost pressure just continues to come at Rivian. And that's going to be a big challenge for the company's margin. So this is the big news for the day. The loss of the $7,500 tax credit just outright completely gone is I think really notable. We haven't heard from management yet. That may change even by the time I post this video. But as of the time that I'm recording, there's no comments from management. So we'll see if they're able to adapt. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them source materials in maybe a little bit different location to try to get around these rules. That is the good news with using third-party suppliers is when rules like this change from the government, that means you're able to adapt and change. And Rivians are manufactured or at least assembled in the US so that we know that eventually they should be able to qualify for the $7,500 tax credits. But short term, not going to qualify. I think that's really notable for Rivian. We'll see what it looks like for demand and margins. But just another hit for the company. And this comes at a time when General Motors is coming with more and more vehicles. You saw the trucks on that list. There's SUVs coming as well. So there's more and more competition and they're going to get that $7,500 tax credit. I think this is really notable for Rivian, at least today. But what do you think about this loss of the $7,500 tax credit? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. And I'll put a link to exactly what the rules are below if you want to look at those details. Thanks for watching, everybody, and check back here to Rev Investing for more Rivian coverage in the future. I'll see you here next time.